What is up, guys? It's the Sound Alchemist here, and I'm with the springtime loving Gersh One. And it's different because, you know, it's cold outside and we're inside getting warm and cracking nuts because I think that's what you're supposed to do over an open fire. Yep. Because this is another for the greater. <laughs> this is a video series where we answer the questions left by you, the viewer. If you have a question for us, comment down below. Put a question in front of your question because we get those questions first. first. We also have super things. If you guys want to support the channel and you don't want to go through Patreon, even though I recommend you do because Patreon is better than, <laughs> than <laughs> YouTube, uh, you could support us with a super thanks. A super thanks is a guaranteed way for you to get your question answered in the next episode. And that is what? Uh, Ninja Squirrel has done. He asks. Mm. How many bears would Bear Grylls grill if Bear Grylls could grill bears? Wow, I'm surprised you said that perfectly. Uh, yeah. I tried saying that um, a few minutes ago, and I kind of stumbled at the end. But, you know, you just dust yourself off and pick yourself up and just, you know, do it again. Yeah, that's a lyric to a song, yeah. Something like that, yeah. yeah. Um, Bear Grylls isn't relevant anymore. <laughs> yeah, I think it was, like, people were saying, like, his survival things weren't really, like, out in nature. Right. It was all just uh, fabricated. A ruse. Ruse. Um, so it was basically like Zeech. He was like changing up machinations, camera angles, smoke and mirrors to make it seem like he was, you know, doing these crazy things. And don't get me wrong, he did do some of it, but it's like he it's, never it was, drank his own piss. <laughs> yeah, it was all Kool Aid. Um, but that's that's the horrors we face when we watch reality TV. There is no real, only machinations of Zeech. Exactly. Uh, so Bear Grylls would grill. Uh, what's Zeech's number? Seven, isn't it? Uh, yes. Lucky number seven, yeah, I, I think so, it I is. I think so. It's funny that all the four chaos gods have their own like things, yeah. colors, uh, numbers, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. The only one, the only number I know for sure is corn, and it's eight. Yeah. Right. Because hate. <laughs> eight rhymes with hate. We'll go with that. Um, so let's thank you for the super thanks, uh, Ninja Squirrel. Uh, really good question. Let's move on to the next question, which comes from. I got one by Galerjo. I love me the pleasure of tasting sugar, but sugar causes tooth decay. So I'm confused. If sugar is this forbidden pleasure that is harmful in excess, why does it summon curses of Nurgle instead of curses of Slanesh? Because sugar sounds like it's the one thing Nurgle needs, and Slanesh can agree it's their common thing. Yeah, and that's like an element of most chaos gods share emotions mm -hmm. or share things. So right. yes, diabetes is Nurgle, uh, but then also like a sugar high yeah. is Slanesh. So I think there those are the dualities mm -hmm. of chaos, which I wanted to create a video about and I'm still writing the script for. It'll take a while. Yeah, it's got a nice ring to it. The duality of chaos. Yeah. Would you guys click on it? Probably not. <laughs> no, unless you put like some breasts on the thumbnail yeah or say uh, female space marines and then there you guys you would be like no mm -hmm. henry cavill adds female space marines to the Mar marvel i was gonna say marvel <laughs> to the warhammer cinematic universe then all of a sudden boom everybody hates uh henry cavill which mm -hmm. they should <laughs> uh this next question and i think it's the main question comes from the bull ba balrog's butthole mm. what's a balrog that thing from uh, lord of the rings the thing on fire that fought against uh, oh Gandalf. with the whip mm -hmm. ooh nice uh, what do you think I bet his butthole is like super not clean or just really clean because it's, it's always burning yeah, yeah. it's like just disinfecting constantly uh, he asks who do you think will be the next Primark to die that's a good question yeah very good question I'm surprised it was so buried in the questions we did before yeah <laughs> so when it comes to Primarchs they are these super demigod warriors of conquest that are also psychics to some degree and they were the emperor's way to conquer the galaxy and unite all of mankind under the imperium these warriors i don't know how would i put it they were never really meant to stay for a long time just like the astartes they were meant to be a tool used by the emperor to accomplish his goals and then to be discarded or like drake here for the long, or here for the short. No, here, I'm here for, for a good time, not for the long time. There you go. <laughs> Nothing was the same. There you go. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I, I think that the Emperor had ways to kill off every Primarch. And that's crazy to think, because these guys were nigh unstoppable. But we have seen some Primarchs fall. Um, I was, I'm doing, I'm currently like in the middle, kind of, of a series called The Death of a Primarch. Currently I've talked about the Gorgon Ferris Manus. Uh, Horus, and uh, there was one more. Oh, Conrad Kurz. Yeah. So the reason how each of these Primarchs died varies drastically. Obviously, with Kurz, he kind of let himself 
succumb to the assassin to prove a point to prove a point to the emperor that hey all these uh, visions premonitions you know future sight that i have it doesn't mean anything it's all going to happen regardless of how much we struggle um when it came to ferris manis he died fighting his best friend uh fulgrim he got beheaded and then with horus clearly we know we know what happened but we don't know the details yet because the lore is being rewit- rewritten in the new books but yeah the emperor basically takes him out yeah um because chaos has overtaken him and then chaos leaves him and then the emperor has to strike down his favorite son and i think the element there is like there's always a prime marking conflict with either his dad or his brother right mm-hmm. uh, so i think if you were to look at the prime marks that are alive right now and if gw were to kill one of them uh it would more than likely be someone connected strongly to someone else which i think would be well sanguinis is dead well, was yeah, dead. Was dead, is dead, maybe dead, near death state, yeah. yeah so but that might, also happened between a fight with his brother, Horus. So it would be interesting if, like, they bring back Sanguinius, but then because everybody's hating on GW because they're bringing back Sanguinius, kind of, um, because it goes against the lore, if Abaddon killed him, because Abaddon's kind of the representation of Horus. And Essentially, he's, like, trying to do away with Horus and become the next new Horus by showing that, hey, I'm doing things better than you did. And what better thing to do than to finally actually kill Sanguinius? Yep. Especially yep. if, like, Horus was the one that killed Sanguinius, supposedly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then we've seen another near-death fight between um, Gilliman and Mortarian in the God Blight novels. Yeah. Um, the Emperor stepped in on that one, but Mortarian had it in the bag. Mm-hmm. Spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Is it? Yeah. Um, Sounds like it. Yeah. So, I mean, Primarchs aren't indestructible. Uh, we've seen Primarchs die and come back they they can be cloned um, and their clones are a little bit weaker but um yeah it's definitely a possibility that we'll probably see another primark die in our lifetimes for sure yeah and we're young we're barely 30 well yeah. the next day is never promised never isn't that part of a song <laughs> maybe, maybe. <laughs> next question comes from neo acid creep you spe- you s- specifically said you appreciate all of your spanish speaking fa- fans that means you don't appreciate us gringos and a gringa. I like how you said a gringa, meaning like one woman, because that is basically our demographic. It's <laughs> yeah. all men and one woman who apparently is a white woman. Um, you're right. Yeah, we don't appreciate you guys. Yeah, everybody is unappreciated equally without feeling uncomfortable. Exactly. <laughs> we hate all of you the same way. Mm-hmm. Think of us as chaos. We hate you, but we can't thrive without you. I know. Isn't that weird? <laughs> Your belief is what keeps us going. Yeah. We are a wheel. Thanks for the super thanks. Mm-hmm. <laughs> sometimes I'm on the bottom. Sometimes he's on top. There you That's go. how wheels go. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. So, Nash? Power everything, though. Next question. The big one. I'm so poor that in the wintertime, I have to use an old pillowcase as a scarf. What memories do you guys have of winter fun? Winter fun? <laughs> yeah. Um, I went sledding once with a friend. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I don't, I, I never liked sledding. Every time I would go sledding, it would be a cold, like tiresome thing. Yeah. Cause you have to, like the amount of time that you're sliding is like 5% of the time that you're spending walking up the hill, you know, breathing heavy, you're freezing cold. It's just not fun. Yeah, that's why, like, I started, in order for me to gain that fun of, like, going down the hill, is I would target, like, people, the Mm. parents standing at the bottom. (laughs) Yeah. I'm going to get their knees Mm -hmm. or shins. Um, And usually I would just, like, not make it and slip off and go into dirt. Yeah. Because there was always a dirt pile for some reason. (laughs) Always, yeah. Yeah. And I think there was one where there's a creek, and if you went too far, you would go into the creek. Yeah. Yeah. That's the, the thrill of death is always fun. It is, especially when you're a seven year old. <laughs> exactly. Um, so yeah, not not that many winter uh, fun times. Uh, it is really nice though. Like when I was younger, uh, because of the snow, most people wouldn't be on the road, and then you could just do hood rat stuff in peace. In peace. Next question. Oh, this one is by Jack Macker. Where are all the cowboy guardsmen? Yeah, like if you think of all the regiments, what is the most closely related to a cowboy? And the answer, I don't even know. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm, like you got your Talarins, your Cadians. Uh, yeah, I'm not really thinking. Anything I can think of is not cowboy-centric. Yeah. But I'm pretty sure there's got to be some like world that's kind of like 
set in like the westerns kind of thing yeah more of a feudal world kind yeah of thing. that's yeah. what i was thinking i mean hell even like star wars has like their cowboy centric worlds and stuff like that yeah that main like blue guy right yes uh yeah. cad bane yeah yeah well He's i mean that whole world what was it called with like the mandalorian tattooing was it tattooing that they were in i thought so i guess that's kind of because you had the sheriff dude mm-hmm. he was like dead and then not dead yeah yeah Back to tanks. They do wonders. <laughs> um, but yeah, if you want to create your homebrew, your own cowboy, uh, uh, I guess, uh, regiment, mm-hmm. uh, it would be really good for you to go to Michael's or Hobby Lobby and get those boxes full of like the um, cowboy stuff. Yeah, I mean, hell, even Gene Sitter cults have a cowboy in their ranks. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. The, what's it called? Keller Morph? I don't know, some, something like that. Or, yeah, uh, Gene Steelers have a lot of, like, really cool or odd things, I guess. What's interesting to me is that Imperial Guardsmen um, are really popular with you guys. So we've been posting more Imperial Guard uh, videos. And surprisingly, like, they do really well, which leads me to believe that there's a lot of Imperial Guard players. But we don't have that. Like, yeah. in our play group or even going into the GW stores that we've been to, like, there's nobody plays Imperial Guard. Yeah, very rarely do you see that, which is funny because there's actually one person in our play group that does have Guard. He has tanks. There you go, tanks. Yeah. Not blobs of, like, 60,000 Guardsmen. Exactly, yeah. Because they're a nickel in point value. Yeah. <laughs> not in price. No. <laughs> not at all. They're expensive. Yeah. And not just that, but I feel like guardsmen are like the underdogs of 40K. Yeah. At least when I'm picking an army, I'm like, why would I play humans? I'm a human. I want to play like a space marine or some type of Xenos. But apparently you guys like it. You guys watch the videos. Yeah, Maybe they, it's because it's relatable. Maybe. They did get a new upgrade sprue with like more options and stuff like that. So. Women Imperial Guardsmen. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Next question comes from Jeremy Cunha. Oh, wait, did we answer his question? Uh, I think so, yeah. Okay. Jeremy Cunha. <laughs> did, did Magic the Gathering ruin their own market by republishing older cards from, 30th, from their 30th anniversary? No, they ruined their market by charging people a thousand dollars to buy packs of proxies. They did that. Yeah. Oh. They're like, oh, you guys want to share in the love of, of Magic: The Gathering? Here, spend a thousand dollars for cards you can't even use in tournaments. Damn. Yeah. Which is just like, nah, that's stupid. <laughs> and they didn't know that before they bought them. Oh no, they said these were proxies. Oh. Okay. So Magic: The Gathering, or I guess Wizards of the Coast, knew what they were doing, mm. and they're just like, yeah, this is just for like. The people that have money, they're basically just saying, here, just spend $1,000 for us. Yeah, it's interesting with these older games um, like Magic the Gathering, Warhammer 40K. And even when we look at our channel, our demographic is between 25 to 35. Mm-hmm. So we got that like big boy money now. Um, so I think that's kind of the answer why these companies stay afloat because they just... Like, yeah. it's us spending all this money. Right. They're not, like, relying on kids asking their parents, like, oh, hey, spend a $1,000 because, you know, the parents won't. Right. And when we were younger, that's what we would do. Mm-hmm. So, like, I wonder, I mean, I hope that um, GW is doing a really good job of reaching those kids. Maybe. If not, Warhammer then, Adventures. <laughs> if not, like, our demographic is just going to keep getting older and older, older, and then 40K is just going to become, like, oh, yeah, it's, like, that weird thing that older people do. Yeah. But I feel like even nowadays, like... Because Magic the Gathering and um, Warhammer, they're almost the same age. Like, they're about yeah. 30, 35. Or, or, or late 80s. Yeah. Um, so I feel like a lot of people know of the two. Um, and, like, there is that crossover. Like, with when we had, like, Commander decks for Warhammer going into Magic the Gathering. Yeah. So I think that also brought in more people to, f- f- like, oh, I play Magic. Let me dive into 40K. Or, oh, I play 40K. Let me dive into Magic. So, yeah. I think it's interesting to see how these two groups of people interact and stuff like that. Yeah, we'll see what happens with the um, 40K Cinematic Universe, if it ever happens. Yeah. Um, because then that's, that should bring in like a whole wave well, I, of people. I feel like even now, like a lot of people are like, Henry Cavill is going into this weird universe. Like, let's look into it. And I feel like that's been helping a lot of content creators because there's a bunch of new people, new subscribers, new commenters and stuff like that. That's helping content creators get more... Um, information out to these newer players and as such it's helping GW grow because now they're making money by having newer people dive into it and learn and all this kind of stuff that's true uh, hopefully um, GW and well hopefully 40k like just keeps going forever yeah I mean the way they're going with the storyline yeah because I feel like they recycle a lot of stuff even yeah. when new stuff comes out it's like oh this is kind of like that one storyline or oh there's a new demigod well it's just like like a Bellacore kind of retelling right yeah 
But those were the questions for today. If you guys have more questions for us, please comment down below. Thank you guys so much for listening and hanging out with us, and we will talk tomorrow. That's right. It's been the Sound Alchemist. Gershwan. And we are out. <laughs>